the defendant asked that post-majority support be ended. They ended up ending that. And without that funds, now I would like to have a review of spousal support that was ordered. And I would like to have filing status, tax filing status. Um, I have not missed any of the child support payments. I am in extreme financial distress at this point in time. Let a lot of this go because of the post-majority, but when he entered to have that terminated, I... The court will note that this matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to show cause. Ms. Parrish, uh, you may proceed. Yes, we recently went to court um, to uh, the defendant asked that post-majority support be ended. For our oldest son, it was written into our divorce decree, and so it was um, you had ordered for a friend of the court to do a review, so they ended up ending that, um, and without that funds, now I would like to um, have a review of spousal support that was ordered um, that Mr. Parrish hasn't paying that is ordered um, in our divorce decree, and through the um, spousal support for $700 per year. And that has not been occurring. Also, it's ordered that um, in the previous order, medical, he pays 60% and I pay 40 of the uncovered uninsured. And there has been uh, two larger bills. I've been paying some the smaller ones, just doing it myself to avoid conflict. But two of the larger ones, I would like to have him pay his portion. And then the third thing is tax filing status. I have the ch children, well, now I guess the oldest has aged out, but our youngest, I have um, about 300 nights, and I would like to have filing status. What does the judgment provide uh, as it relates to the tax deduction? It says that we are going to rotate once the oldest ages out, but that was supposed to be with the post-majority, so now that's why I'm asking for that to change so that I can file her. Okay. Well, let me tell you, the court does enforce the judgments and the orders of the court. So in this matter, if the judgment provides that the parties would alternate filing status, the court is not going to change that. The other issues, uh, so I asked Mr. Parrish, uh, she stated you're not paying the uh, spousal support or contributing to the medical. What's your response? I, I have not missed any of the child support payments, of course. She didn't uh, say child support. She said medical. Oh, no. Any medical bills, uh, both of the children, both Alan and Alina, are covered on my medical. Um, I think, I'm not sure what uh, Kelly has in regards to any additional insurance, but I have always covered them. So whatever medical. Okay, she's not talking insurance, she's talking uninsured. So it's whatever your medical has paid that they have not covered. She's saying there's an additional a deficiency there that you have not contributed to. Ms. Parrish, have you provided him with a, uh, I guess, an accounting of what insurance paid and what's not been paid? I have multiple times. I do have those dates um, that I have sent him photos of the actual bill with the account number so he can call to Bronson. And they're both through Bronson Battle Creek. They're local providers that okay. are in. I always go to in network, so it's less expensive. Okay. Well, are you saying you didn't get those, sir? Or no, you... no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I have received and the, the bills that uh, still need to be paid off in regards to uh, both of the children, whatever I can pay, I try to pay. Um, I am in extreme financial distress at this point in time. Um, I'm not shirking my responsibilities for um, for Alan or Alina whatsoever. And it, it, it's not meant um, to seem that way. I don't think that uh, Miss Parrish understands the. Okay, well, let me let me tell you what I'm currently in. So tell me what I'll tell you what happens. The court okay. enfor the court enforces its judgments and its orders, and yes. all of that is well and good, and we understand it may not be that you're intentionally uh, shirking your responsibility, but the issue is whether you are complying with the orders of the court, and she's saying that you're not. And what we're going to have to do is 
there's a dispute as to that, then we're going to have to have a hearing and make a determination of whether, you know, how much is owed, et cetera, in this matter. And then you, you'll be required to pay that particular amount. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disputing that, that I do owe. I will be more than willing to, uh, to, okay. And the medical Perhaps, Kelly, the tell me exactly what it is I owe, and I will do my best to make payments on what I owe. Ms. Parrish, what is the amount? Do you know what the amount is on the medical that's owed? I do. I did make a $140 payment a year ago towards that. Um, and so his balance towards the total, I owe $214, and he owed $320. He did pay $40. So right now he currently owns, owes $280 on mm-hmm. for Alina. I just got that bill and provided him with that probably two weeks ago, and that's $169, and I don't know the math on that. 60% okay. $169 would okay. be his. And the amount of the spousal support that he's delinquent on, how, um, how much is owed on that? Only for 2023. There's still one year left of spousal, but for 2023, um, he owes $496. Okay. Are you disputing that amount, sir? Oh. No, no. What I'll do, Ms. Parrish, I'll allow you to put in place an order which states that he is, in fact, delinquent and owes spousal support in the amount of $496 for the year 2023, and that he mm-hmm. owes that particular medical, the the uh, 280 and whatever the percentages is of uh, the other uh, the other amount. Let me see. Okay. His amount would be, uh, of the 169 would be 101 40. So $101 and 40 cents. Okay. Thank you. Put that, put that amount in. And uh, then at that particular point, he has those numbers that he ends up having to pay. If he doesn't pay, then you can uh, proceed at that point, ma'am, you can do a number of things. You can go after and seek a garnishment of his wages. You can seek an attachment of assets or any other, uh, you know, seizure of assets, et cetera, which would satisfy that obligation. That's up to you. So the court will let you put in place that order and you can submit it under what they call a seven day notice of entry. So if you get it in within seven days of today's date, you don't need to schedule it up for entry. If you don't get it in within seven days of today's date, then you'll have to send it to him, get it up noticed of entry, and uh, then we'll have to have a hearing on that. Okay. Do I just put it, type it, and mail it directly to him? You have to mail it to him. You do the original to the court with a notice of entry. Okay. Again, Your Honor, I want to go on the record as saying I let a lot of this go because of the post majority. But when he entered to have that terminated, I I, I don't need to know that. That's irrelevant to today's hearing. So I understand, but just get the order entered, and then we'll okay. have the we'll have the numbers and the amounts that are owed. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. We'll conclude at uh, 1043 a.m. You have a good day. Have you kept him from visiting his children? Yes, I have. How long has it been that you've kept him from visiting with the children? He spoke to them this past Christmas. No, I did not. So you essentially kept this child from her mother for two years? Yes, sir. You know that's a crime, right? She's got a felony warrant for her arrest. Uh, Walker County just contacted me not two months ago, you know, asking where her whereabouts are. Learned about my children because she hasn't let me have any kind of contact with them in over a year. I haven't got to see my kids since not last Father's Day, but the year before that. 